Jake Good. Yeah, that's me. Bloodletting by Jake. Yeah, that's me. Uh huh. Yeah, that's my branding. So about 2012, you started out as a tattoo artist at the Artful Dodgers, and you're now at Artcore Studios. Yeah, down in Georgetown. It's a, sort of a high end custom shop. Madame Lozango's tattoo is where I started. I basically just went down there and volunteered for long enough for them to give me a job. I, I scrubbed toilets and mopped and swept, got yelled at for like long enough that they actually started paying me to be there. And so I had a front desk job for maybe a year or so before they offered me an apprenticeship. And uh, that, that's kind of just a slow grind. You got to get your foot into a door and then get them to you know, see value in you and ultimately just like you enough to put you on. People don't really walk into tattoo shops and get apprenticeships. You kind of have to hang out at a shop long enough to deserve one. You're at the Artcore studio now. I saw that uh, video that you did of the butterfly neck tattoo. Yeah, my buddy Levitate, Connor, he, uh, he put that video together for me. How'd you feel the first time you tattooed someone's neck? Oh, it's terrifying. Yeah, it's it's the it's the scariest thing ever to, to tattoo somebody. Specifically, a neck is like kind of a scary spot to tattoo on, but like you kind of won't attempt a tattoo on the neck unless you're like sort of adept at tattooing enough to feel comfortable at approaching that stuff. But besides tattooing on necks specifically, like the first couple years of tattooing are fucking terrifying for sure. You're, it, there's no erases for sure. It, it, it is challenging in that regard, but once you get used to it, it's kind of like all you know. And like now, I don't I don't know that I could do a piece of art where erasing was a part of it like that's that's a weird concept to me now and especially with spray paint too like I used to use spray paint before I got into tattooing I mean technically you can kind of erase with spray paint by putting the same color back over it but it's similar to tattooing in that like you sort of get one chance and one stroke to get it right you know writing graffiti was actually the thing that like I had been doing the longest so just being involved in art in that regard just carried forward and graffiti is kind of a young man's game and when I started kind of reaching the end of my 20s I started looking for something to do that was art oriented and uh, found tattooing. For me, there's like a natural bridge and that's lettering. I end up doing a lot of custom lettering and it's weird. Inside of the tattoo industry, lettering is a thing that not a lot of tattooers are fond of because it's quite challenging. Before I ever got into tattooing, lettering was my main focus. So it's kind of a natural transition. So I do a lot of script, a lot of like gothic, like crippled styles and old English, cholo, street style, hand style, lettering, all that kind of shit. So it actually translates into tattooing pretty directly. I mean, I just always did art when I was coming up in hip hop, I did all everything. I was rapping and DJing and writing graffiti. And I don't really do art outside of tattooing anymore. Like I don't really write graffiti or like, I used to do like acrylic paintings and shit like that. I don't really do stuff outside of tattooing anymore. I do stuff for tattooing, like paint flash and that kind of stuff. The shop that I'm in currently, each one of the artists at the shop is preparing six pages of flash so that we can feature them in the front lobby when we reorganize. Flashes, I, I'm not familiar with that term. Okay, so flash, you've probably seen it without knowing the terminology. If you've ever walked into a tattoo shop, in the lobby, you'll see a page of tattoo design design artwork and they'll be classically anywhere from one to maybe five or six designs on one page and that's for picking a design off of the wall to get tattooed. It's kind of the the other end of the spectrum from custom tattoos. A custom tattoo, you come in and you ask for what you want and they make it only just for you. A flash tattoo design is a design that's made for picking off the wall kind of. Like if you walked into a shop and they had a bunch of eagles on the wall, that would be on a flash page. The people that are doing tattoo flash are professional tattooers. Even more often than not, you'll find that like with traditional tattoo artists people that do more old school approach tend to do like watercolor spit shade and like more like sort of old school sailor style tattoo flash that's a little bit more right down the alley in terms of the definition of what it is you're considered a custom tattoo artist i do mostly custom work uh, that being said if somebody came to me and wanted me to replicate an image like that painting that you sent me like if somebody brought that to me and was like i want this as a tattoo i would do it i wouldn't be like no i'm a custom artist i don't do that i just i'm mostly do custom work and I enjoy doing custom work. So you brought up that painting that I sent you. Yeah. So I designed this. St. Michael? Yeah. yeah so it's a classic image. Well, I changed it up a little bit. Like I used oh, yeah. Assassin's Creed. Oh, okay, word. And then um, I, I put the uh, sort of Chinese. Oh, you mean like a Hanya mask? Yeah. Okay, word. It was designed to be like a, like a rib tattoo. All right, word. So when you're looking at something like a rib tattoo, so when you design like something like a rib tattoo versus, you know, tattooing a, a solid piece of like meat, the thigh yeah you have to go go about that differently um yeah i mean you have to be a little more careful anywhere the, where the skin is more sensitive or it's more painful for your client you kind of have to you're kind of traversing you know and navigating those sort of areas as you go so like if you're working on something like a thigh that's like resilient skin and it's strong and it's tough and your client's not in a lot of pain you could work pretty quickly i could outline a thigh a lot quicker than i can outline a rib cage and really it's just because it's harder 
the, anywhere on the body where it's harder to tattoo, it's going to take longer to tattoo the same tattoo. You're talking about the actual tattoo process. You're, there's no there's no difference in between like the way that you would design a tattoo that goes on like a large piece of flesh and a rib. Not necessarily in size. Like size dictates the amount of detail. Like in, in tattooing, I generally like to let my clients know when we're consulting that the order goes where, what, how. Because those determinations are contingent upon each other. If you were saying that you wanted a Japanese bodysuit style tattoo and then I asked you where you wanted it, you're like, oh, well, I want it on the inside of my arm. It's not conducive to the style. You need to do a full body tattoo to do a Japanese bodysuit style tattoo. So I usually ask people, where do you want your tattoo? And that tells you how big the tattoo can be. And then once you know how big the tattoo can be, then you can get a good idea for how much detail is possible, how much subject matter can fit in this. If somebody wants like a tattoo on their wrist and they want like a bumblebee and a flower and some lettering and a date and all this, I need to kind of talk them off the ledge and let them know, listen, we're dealing with the space of about a, a square inch and you can't fit five things in a tattoo that big. So really ultimately size is the only determining factor for the amount of detail. Where it goes on the body really only makes a difference for how long it takes to apply the tattoo. One of your tattoos won an award at the Portland Tattoo Fest. Yeah, I've gotten a couple awards now. First place at Portland uh, for some lettering that I did and a couple of second places at a Portland Expo a few years later. One of them for that black and gray moth that you saw in that video and the other one was for some other lettering as well. I, I won a couple of awards. It's it's pretty uh, gratifying. And I compete in Seattle. It's just, uh, in all honesty, it's just kind of easier to win in Portland. There's less tattooers at the Portland Expo, specifically less lettering. The Pacific Northwest, there's not a lot of tattooers that do lettering. It's a little bit easier for me to go to an expo here in Seattle or Portland and do well with lettering, whereas like if I went down to California, I wouldn't even be a relevant lettering artist. I would just get buried by all the masters down there. There, there are some incredible lettering artists out there, and a lot of them are in California. There's a lot of street style lettering that's informed by gang style graffiti lettering, for sure. Me, specifically, I'm kind of known by other tattooers. For My strength is that I'm a clean tattooer. I do really crispy lines and my colors are saturated nice and solid. I'm very picky about things being perfect. And that's just kind of maybe a personality trait of mine. Like I really like things to be perfect and clean and organized and stuff like that. And I, I just kind of pour a lot of attention into that. I do have some techniques that I use to make my work that way. I tell some of the young apprentices that have been around while I was tattooing, I've shared this with, and it sounds kind of silly, but I imagine garage doors when I'm pulling tattoo lines. And it's because any human element that you introduce introduce into the technique of applying a tattoo line makes it not perfect. A human isn't uh, accurate the way that a machine is. So I try to think of a machine. When you start a garage door, it follows a track. It can't go left or right. It can't go up or down. It can only follow that track. And when you start a garage door, it starts at the same speed that it finishes at. It doesn't speed up or slow down at any time. It's a perfect steady mechanical motion. I kind of try to embody that when I'm doing the tattoo line. I start at the same speed that I finish at. I don't speed up or slow down at any time and I don't veer off of my track and in that regard I kind of can get as close to a perfect mechanical motion as a human body can make and uh, that's what I enjoy pursuing in terms of technical excellence. And then you get a little bit more free once you start to do the shading. Oh yeah, shading has a lot more room for tweaking and stuff like that. Like you can fill an area with some shading and you can add more shading but you can't really do that to a line. If you pull a line and it's not the right line you can't change it afterwards. Do you know what I'm saying? You have a lot less room after after the fact. So the line work is one of the more sensitive parts. Ultimately, right now, as a tattooer, I'm trying to work on drawing better. I'm kind of aware that my strength is technical application. And rather than spending the next five to 10 years just trying to make my clean lines even cleaner, I think that I need to learn more about drawing back pieces and sleeves and large, complicated tattoo compositions and more nuanced techniques in terms of making complicated tattoos. That's one of the main reasons why I'm at Art Cores. And a lot of the guys that are there are doing really cool, high-end, large, large custom tattoos and I have a lot to learn from those guys so hopefully I can sponge a lot of that information and focus on doing a lot more want to do designs and a lot more developing the type of style that I'd rather push other than just doing the tattoos that are coming to me. I actually don't have any tattoos. <laughs> I think I, I changed my mind too much as to what I want. That's really common especially like for the first one. I always offer the analogy that it's like it's kind of like losing your virginity. Like the first time it, it has to be so special. You know what I mean? But then after you do the first time, it's like, whatever, put an eagle on my chest. I don't care. It, it's similar to that with tattooing. I felt the same way. Like when I was planning to get my first tattoo, it was like, oh, I don't know. It has to be perfect. I don't know what I want. What would I get? And it was just such a crushing big deal that it was kind of a hard hurdle to get over. And then after I got my first tattoo, I was like, oh, I want 12 next time. Like, I don't even care what they are. Like, 
Panthers, Roses, whatever, you know? And so it kind of, that door opens pretty wide open once you get in there. I think that's why people tend to say that tattoos are addictive. I don't think they're addictive. I think that people that get them just want them. So uh, they get more of them, you know? So you and I actually, we've got some mutual friends. We have a connection in the Alaska, Seattle hip hop rap scene, huh? Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Sydney Dean for plugging us together. Phonetic, aka. Arctic Flow guys too, right? Arctic Flow. I ended up with some of their studio demo CDs. You know, uh, Sid, back when he was uh, rapping under Phonetic, he did a couple of projects with those guys when they had Icebox Entertainment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that, I, I met those guys through Sid. Uh, word on the street is that you're one of the most talented rappers around. Oh, well, that's that's flattering. I mean, I I, I did a, okay for a little while, but I mean, I don't I don't really do a whole lot of rap anymore. I was pretty decent at writing, but like a lot of a lot of other cats like had me on like like especially the Arctic Flow guys. They were really amazing performers. I always had a little bit of polishing to do on that shit. I'm working with a, a local hip hop group here in Seattle called Prior Prism. We have a, a feature on Radio Concuss on uh, YouTube. That's like one of the few features that you can catch like my my more recent hip hop stuff. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, thank you for taking the, the time. It was, uh, it was good to talk to you. You too, man. Thanks for the interview. Okay, all right. Thank you, Jake. No sweat. Stay safe and healthy, bro. Right. Peace. Right.